Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to Sauna Emergent Biopark in Jurassic World Evolution, a project where we're aiming to build this biologically accurate dinosaur park and preserve with the use of mods. Today is the final episode, the unfortunately somewhat uh, premature final episode, because the game has become just far too unstable to continue, continue working with. In fact, right now, I can't actually click on anything on the screen. Like, I can't click any of the UI or the buildings. It's just been too heavily modded. There's too much stuff in here right now where the game is not allowing me to go any further. And removing mods would just mean compromising what we've already built. For example, if I were to remove, like, the bamboo, for example, would lose, like, so much of the habitat we've already built. It was kind of expected. In fact, I used to always say, uh, like a little warning at the start of each episode, you know, mod at your own discretion, because things like this can happen. And you know what? I think it's kind of poetic in, so in some ways, you know, having this final park end kind of like this, because, you know, Jurassic World Evolution 2 is coming right around the corner. We're going on to bigger, better things. And it's, um, we did our best with this one. And I think we really did put together like a good amount of really nice builds and like the park as a whole I think is quite beautiful and I'm really proud of what I did here but it was just not meant to like be as big and as massive as it was meant to and I think again it's kind of poetic because it does show you the limitations of this current game and like really kind of sets the tone for what we're about to get which is of course Jurassic World Evolution 2 which is meant to be you know, bigger, better, more stable, with way, like, you know, improved graphics, improved animation, so many new, amazing things headed our way. But I really did, um, you know, I, I did my best. I tried to game the game working as best it could, but of course, all good things must come to an end, and I, I am proud of it. We did a great job here, I think. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a very careful tour of the park. I can't click any of the buildings or it might crash on me again. Um, already you might notice there are little unstable things here and there. The number of guests like fluctuate in and out all the time for some reason. Like they'll just disappear and then they'll reappear which is really odd. But as you can see this is our main street, our one of our first builds. Really really like how this looks. Loving the um, the aquatic foliage here at the bottom from that um, pack by Radio 1985. Once again this part wouldn't really be possible without all this amazing, um, all these amazing mods so all the mods will be linked in the description down below, so do check them out once again. Be careful if you're trying to make a super modded giant park like this. Things can break. <laughs> but I really like how the high street turned out. I think it looks super nice. It's very crowded, like all the buildings have backs to them as well because I clipped them together. For example, the gift shop and bars are now like two, like a two-in-one building facing each other. There's picnic tables everywhere, the Spinosaurus statue. Overlooks this beautiful lake, which was going to be um, a, uh, an Asian dinosaur habitat. Uh, we actually managed to get two Omesaurus in there, which unfortunately were the last dinosaurs I could end in. If I tried to open up the hatchery now, it just uh, crashes um, instantly, basically. Um, I really like these Mosasaur fences, of course, by Raider 1985. Fantastic work. And the foliage I just added into the, the different buildings all worked out pretty well. A uh, T-Rex statue right by the Innovation Center, love that. All looking pretty good, and as we come around, we move here and we see this circle, or semi-circle, or quarter of a circle, really, of viewing galleries overlooking the Yang Chuanosaurus habitat, and as you all know, by now, the Yang Chuanosaurus is one of my favorite modern dinosaurs in the game. Truly a beautiful animal, look at that, what a stunner. Jagged Fang Designs always does fantastic work and they've got this really gorgeous kind of like twisty valley like habitat which I really like the look of. Here's the innovation center once again surrounded by these beautiful lipstick palms, a plant actually native to my home of Malaysia which I don't live at anymore by the way I'm in the UK but back home like when I did grow up in Malaysia um, we had loads of these lipstick palms all over the place in my house in my school everywhere. On the other side of the um, innovation center here we have the petting zoo which is another kind of favorite of mine. You enter through these airlock systems which are made out of the emergency bunkers and you find all these adorable tiny dinosaurs. Some Codiptrix, some Psittacosaurus in this first one. You go across here and then you get these uh, gorgeous Homolocephaly which are base game dinosaur I really love. And down here we have Cyanoceratops. Really beautiful work. 
uh, I believe by Zach as well. Great stuff, and I'm really big fan of that. The Sidicosaurus was by Nano Census. Um, were the Cadiptrix by them too? They might be, can't quite remember. But yeah, that's that for these two habitats. You go back here and there's an operation center. It's kind of a satellite one. And we'll look at the main one later. Turning around and looking into this habitat, we have our Nanooksaurus. Uh, was it Nanooksaurus or Nanook Tyrannus? Nanooksaurus. These beautiful small Tyrannosaurus from a cold weather environment with these gorgeous um, feathering. Really, really beautiful dinosaur. Probably my favorite Tyrannosaurid in the game. And really nice mountainous backdrop with a lot of these temperate trees. Was a big fan of this habitat when I built it and I think it turned out really nice. Moving along to the right behind the hotel, we actually have another Tyrannosaur, the Gorgosaurus by Wheat, I believe. And uh, again, fantastic work. Love these. Very cool. Very different in style than the Nuxaurus, but beautiful. Just the same. Got a little river here that actually flows through a lot of different habitats. And if you turn here, this is the first habitat we built, if I'm not mistaken. And that is, of course, the Alberta Ceratop by LA Studios, which is stunning. I, I love it. Really gorgeous stuff. I'm honestly going to say that for everything because all the mods are beautiful in their own regard. But, you know, again, this park wouldn't be possible without all the work from all these amazing mod authors. So give them your support. Go check them out in the Nexus. Here's the hotel area. We have a little kind of more beachy resort style one up front with a gift shop and a cafe. We have a little garden here, bamboo garden you can walk through, which I quite like. And then the th set of three hotels with a clothes shop and stuff. A viewing center and from here you can go kind of in many different ways. You can take the monorail and head out or you can walk down and you find our first large carnivore habitat, like really large carnivore, in fact one of the largest, in the form of our Mapusaurus by LA Studios. Giants of South America, these guys are quite titanic and would have lived alongside things like Argentinosaurus. So you know, they had to be big to take on big prey. And I give them quite a secure kind of like really fenced in environment, quite arid, but also with some palm trees and stuff. And I think it turned out quite nice. Had to delete some of the palm trees I initially put here, which were the blood oils from the Planet Zoo tree pack. Walking further down here, then this very long stretch of road, uh, you get another monorail, which you could have um, taken from... Could you actually? No, sorry, this is actually the arrival point. That isn't the entry monorail. So you couldn't have actually taken that. You'd have to go down here, and then you could take a monorail. So one of the monorail's directions will lead you back up here, actually, towards where the operation center is. And if you follow this road here, through this kind of hidden path, you get to this secret viewing gallery, which leads to our um, Cretaceous Hell Creek habitat, which we have loads of dinosaurs. You can see a few Taurosauruses from here. They look really good. But we'll come back to that habitat in a bit. Instead, we're going to go further down here to this long stretch of road and see our South America habitat with our beautiful Argentinosaurus, some of the largest land animals ever to exist. We've got um, an indeterminate Hadrosaur represented by the Motivorosaurus and the rest of the Argentinosaurus herd all looking very tall and very beautifully colored. The Dreadnoughters in the base game actually had some lovely colors which translate really well to this Argentinosaurus. Moving on, as you can see, this space was always meant to be built in, but because we didn't, I, um, because we couldn't anymore, I, like, kind of leafed it up. Just covered in forest. And while we're here, let's check out up here, which is actually our... Oh, that's tragic. Oh, never mind. Well, we'll talk about that in a second, but, okay, so this is our operation center. And originally, this was a little, like, um, nursery for all these different plants that we have, uh, now done down in the habitat we'd have all the different plants from the planet zoo packs and they it did look quite beautiful and i would recommend you go check out the first episode again to see them but sadly because i had to remove a lot of them for the sake of the game's ability this is all we have left uh, we still have the really interesting greenhouse arrangement and the power station and stuff so i'm still pretty happy with how this area looks loads of cars here of course these were meant to be abandoned cars but you know this is what we've got so i walked with it all the, um, you know, the standard uh, staff buildings and stuff like that. And then the hatchery where we put all our dinosaurs out at. And then going back down here and turning um, to the left from the uh, Argentinosaurus habitat, we have the wetland habitat for the Ichthyovenator. Sorry, not Ichthyovenator, um, Irritator, actually. Another Spinosaurus, which is very small, very cute, and really beautiful. The skins uh, for this especially I really like. LA Studios did a great job here as well. 
love the mangroves here, they represent the kind of more wetland environment. I think it looks quite good overall. And this is where I started using some of those more natural barriers like logs and stones. Moving along, there's the most recent habitat which I just did off screen uh, for the Omesaurus. Uh, it was also meant to have all the Chinese Stegosaurus, so Huayangosaurus, the Gigantospinosaurus, the um, Chunkingosaurus as well, but unfortunately of course I can't open the hatchery anymore without the game crashing on me. The Omisaurus, however, looks stunning as always. These are by uh, Jagged Fang Designs. Really nice, really gorgeous skin. Does it have a tail club? So I, I can't remember whether this is a thing with Omisaurus, but it might be a sauropod with a tail club. Of course, we know like there are some famous ones like Shinosaurus, which had a tail club, but I'm not sure if Omisaurus would have had one. I created some nice like cliff where the twirl would go through and stuff like that, but of course, sadly, not really much to see on this one besides these two Titanic. I mean, honestly, though, like if there was a zoo out there that had dinosaurs, if they had two sauropods, I would still pay like my life savings to go see it. So, you know what? Habitat with just two sauropods, not the worst thing in the world. Gotta say. <laughs> but yeah, it's a relatively simple one. Really couldn't make do with much of the plants and stuff, but overall still happy with it. Moving up this way, we're going to see some of the uh, more Cretaceous uh, focused habitats. On the left, we have our Lambeosaurus and Stracosaurus, as well as our Euoplocephalus. Um, the Lambeosaurus are by LE Studios, and the other two are base game dinosaurs, some of my favorite base game dinosaurs, which I'm very glad are returning. Look how cute that is. And the Stracosaurus, of course. This is probably one of my favorite skins in the base game. That really skeletal looking Stracosaurus. Really, really quite a creative skin. Over here, of course, is our Hell Creek Tour. You can see all the famous Hell Creek uh, megafauna. You have Taurosaurus over here, which might or might not be the same as Triceratops. Loads and loads of Struthiomimus. Oh, a tremendous amount of Struthiomimus. There's a beautiful Ankylosaurus, I believe by Digital Duck. Struthiomimus should also be by Digital Duck, and Taurosaurus is by Jagged Fang Studios. Jagged Fang Designs. <laughs> I'm certainly surprised I remember most of these. Here's the Alamosaurus um, by Putra DLY, I believe. One of my favorite unmodded um, sauropods looks really good. Not necessarily something native to Hell Creek, but would have lived around North America in the Cretaceous. Here's some Pachycephalosaurus by either Digital Duck or Jagged Fang Designs, one of them. Really love it, looks good. And of course the Jagged Fang Designs and Montosaurus, a classic, one of the most downloaded mods of all time on the Nexus, for good reason. Oh, they're beautiful. I'm just so excited to see like what new behaviors and stuff these animals all have in uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2, so I'm very excited. Here's our, one of our, well, probably the biggest kind of feature habitat, of course, is the T-Rex Kingdom. Kind of a double-sided amphitheater type of vibe with this little um, tube as well that goes down so you can see the T-Rex a little bit more up close. We have two of them in here, and uh, there's one. This is from the Clay Cretaceous Calamity Pack. Just unbelievably uh, gorgeous and I love this T-Rex specifically it's probably my favorite modded T-Rex I, I just like how ooh, that one's really, how chunky it is and how like like it just looks like a well proportioned animal it's got all the musculature and the fat and the skin and everything that makes it look like a real animal and it's just it really is a work of art as most of these well as all of these uh, animals are and uh, it just looks so good as well. So this is their habitat. They actually go down here and they have quite a big space. But now we're going back again. And turning to the left, we have a Stegosaurus habitat. These are by Zach. Relatively minor model changes here just to make it a bit sleeker and define those dorsal plates a bit. But they've got their own like meadowy habitat here that you can look at them through. With a couple of with a viewing gallery kind of section here. We got a pseudo bridge kind of linking the path across the river using the Mosasaur gates. And if we go over here, we see this uh, natural um, rock formation here, which splits the stegosaurs away from the rest of the animals. You have a monorail station with some shops. And then we go over here, and this is where our torvosaurus are. Really stunning um, predators. I believe um, by Jagged Fang Designs as well. Lots of Jagged Fang Design dinosaurs in here today. As, as they should be, because, you know, fantastic model authors. Beautiful skins, and uh, a really nice kind of replacement for an allosaurus just a, a less obscure uh, sorry more obscure animal and i think that works really well for our final habitats we're going to check out 
we go over to Cenozoic uh, Park, which is our Cenozoic section of our park. We got our beautiful Smilodon here uh, with the Raptor Paddock, which is now a Smilodon Paddock. We got a little bit of a guest area, our Colombian Mammoths. We just showcased this in our last episode and they look great as well, along with the Woolly Rhino. And finally, we have our Megatherium over here in the swampier habitat looking fantastic. And that is it for Sauna Emergent Biopark. I know that, you know, it wasn't meant to be as, you know, finished as quickly as it was. But I think we did a fantastic job nonetheless. I think working with the horrendous instability of, you know, having far too many mods, too many assets, more than this game ever intended. I think we did a good job with what we had. We really kind of pushed the envelope a bit. We created something quite beautiful, something I'm very proud of. You know, all the bio parks have been really fun. And looking at my history of playing Jurassic World Evolution, I'll talk a little bit about that um, on the channel. You know, I love Jurassic World Evolution. It's always been one of my favorite games. Way before modding even came around, I just loved it. I know it wasn't like... It had its issues, you know? There were limited animations. There weren't, like, as many features as maybe people would have liked. But Jurassic World Evolution 2 looks to have addressed a lot of this, and I'm really excited for that. But even with that being said, I, I still love Jurassic World Evolution. It's a really special game to me. Um, it's one of those games that really got me kind of into gaming. Like, I don't game an awful lot. Uh, I play like a select few games and that's pretty much it. But, um, you know, I wasn't really into games before Jurassic World Evolution came out. And uh, suddenly I was like, oh my god, um, these are the sort of games I really like. Because before that, the last game I was really into was... Zoo Tycoon 2, which came out in 2004 or something, you know? And it was so long ago. And knowing that these sorts of games were, like, coming back and in a really good way, I was so excited for it, because then we had Jurassic World Evolution, Planet Zoo, and, you know, I'm glad that Jurassic World Evolution brought me back into that environment, because then I got access to, like, you know, seeing games like Planet Zoo, and now I'm following along with the development of all these other stuff, like Prehistoric Kingdom and, you know, other things that are going on in this kind of, like sandbox simulation game fear and it's just like it's really cool to see and just World evolution has been like i remember when i released my first truth here minus and it was kind of an emotional moment for me because it's hard to find good dinosaur media like that's just a fact kind of we had like we have had some good dinosaur documentaries some good dinosaur films and stuff of course with the jurassic series um but seeing things that bring to life dinosaurs in a in a way that's both realistic and really pays respect to how incredible they were and how incredible they can be. Uh, it's it's kind of rare. And I think Jurassic World Evolution, in those early moments, when you release your first dinosaurs, you take care of them, it did something quite fantastic. And it, while it may not have kept that kind of vibe throughout the whole thing, those first moments were just so critical. And I think for a lot of people, if you go and look through people's playthroughs, Especially some of the bigger YouTubers like uh, Best and Slot, Gaming Beaver, and stuff like that. When they first did their uh, Jurassic World Evolution playthroughs, you could tell that first dinosaur release for all of them. It was a bit of an emotional moment, same as it was for me. I'm sure same as it was for a lot of you, because it was it was really special. You had this dinosaur that looked quite real and um, really behaved quite real. And again, while that may not have been kept throughout the whole thing. That first moment really showed me the potential of what a game like this could be and what games like this should be. And I think Jurassic World Evolution 2 is going to keep that up. I'm so excited for it. I, of course, am um, especially keen on the fact they're really focusing on the more naturalistic elements of these dinosaurs, taking care of them, building more realistic environments for them. And just really, really keen on that, you know. And like I said, probably won't be modding it for a long, long time. Won't play just a vanilla game until we're you know, drained of um, potential content, for example, because I'm sure they'll be making DLCs for this for a good long while, so I'm excited to see what those might be. But yeah, Jurassic World Evolution, it's been fun playing on the channel. The um, the bio parks have been a really, you know, a really fun thing to build. I'm just going to move around the camera now because I realize I've been staring at that for a while. Let's watch the, um, the Yangtranosaurus while I talk because I'll be done in a few minutes. But you know, the bio parks were really fun because it was a departure from the for the channel. Um, I'd been playing Planet Zoo almost exclusively, and then I tried um, I tried a bit of Jurassic World Evolution by playing the Return to Jurassic Park. 
Well, I didn't play the campaign on the channel. I just played the sandbox part for the Return to Jurassic Park pack, which was the final DLC, of course, of this game. And then I thought, you know what? Mods have come out. Mods are starting to get popular. Let's try some of those and see if we can build a biologically accurate park. And that, of course, became our first one, which uh, was Nublar Emergent Biopark, which, um, you know, honestly might still be my favorite. Nah, okay, no, Sauna Emergent Biopark is still probably my favorite because of things like you're seeing on screen right now. But Nublar Emergent Biopark holds a special place in my heart. Some of my most viewed videos are from that series, and that's really nice. Um, and then, of course, we did uh, Matanteros Emergent Biopark, which is probably my least favorite. We just didn't do much with that one, I think. And then Takanya, which is the longest running one, which we've been doing for the past few months, and it worked out really well. Of course, now with uh, Sauna, which is the most detailed and the most really with the most effort put into it and the most uh, kind of like love, I guess. So it's been a really fun journey on this game. It's a bit bittersweet seeing it go, but we've got, like I said, bigger, better things ahead of us and a very exciting thing. So I really hope you've enjoyed following me along for this, you know, Drash World Evolution journey. I hope you've all enjoyed Jurassic World Evolution as much as I have across the past however many years, if you've been playing it that long. You know, in the comments, share with me some of your favorite memories from the game or some of your favorite parts of it. And uh, tell me what you're most excited for for the future because, you know, in less than a week, dinosaurs again, because Jurassic World Evolution 2 will be, you know, literally dropping into our hands. And of course, I'll play it and I'll be recording the campaign and also... Uh, well, we'll just see how it goes, really. I'm not sure how much of it I'll record and how much of it I'll upload, but we'll see how it goes and what works best. But I'm just really excited for it. I hope you guys are too. With that all being said, thank you for all your support over, you know, however long you've been watching my channel. It really does mean the world. Thanks um, so much for liking, subscribing, anything like that. You know, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. That always means a lot. And uh, yeah. I will see you all in Jurassic World Evolution 2 sometime next week. And with that being said, I'll see you guys there. Bye!